With me right now is uh, Janice Dean. Uh, you know, she's a weather forecaster extraordinaire. Has a few minutes here uh, before you start your weekend, which is mostly partying. Of course. Always partying. Right. A rollicking good time. And you're referring to? This morning, you used... Talk about disinformation. Exactly. You used a word that I am very familiar with, rollicking. And Stephen Ainsley thought it was a made-up word. But you proved them wrong. I. They said, Brian, it's frolicking. And I said... You don't say rollicking. They said no. You don't say you don't say rollicking. You say frolicking. Yeah. You just forgot a letter. No, rollicking so, is better than frolicking. Because I rollick. <laughs> but the problem is, rollick and frolic usually said in the same sentence. I like to rollick and fro- frolic. Both at the I, same time. Yeah. Well, don't that's confusing. That? Right. Right. So um, I I was vindicated, but for a while with this new program, I would have been under arrest. But give telling America that rollicking was a word. You would have been arrested. And then I would for have that? been immediately released. Right. Word this new police. Instance, yes, the word police. This newest I could be spreading disinformation that rollicking was a word. You're under arrest, sir. Come with me. I love the word rollicking, and I suggest that every day on Fox and Friends we have a new word uh, that might perplex some. Mm. You mean there might be doubtful? It might not be a word. Correct. Gotcha. Don't you think people would tune into that? No. And we could do it before the commercial break. I'm bored break. already. I just, I would not pay. I don't want to can come people, into the morning show to learn one new word. Can people uh, contact you right now and tell you that they would like to have a word of the day on Fox and Friends? No, this is security. You're talking about just come upstairs <laughs> no. and just, what are you talking about? Well, they can email Allison and she can let us know that most of the audience yeah. would like to know a new Allison, word of the what's day. what's your cell phone? <laughs> can, they, can they call you? They, they can. They They're can? Not likely to answer, but they can call. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that reminds me. You know how hard it is to get a human being on the phone these days? I mean, worse than ever. I'm mean, If you want to get hold of a person to talk about flight changes or right. flight delays, that will put you in a queue of at least two hours to get to a person. I tried to make an MRI appointment. Uh, which is something I do on a yearly basis. I have multiple sclerosis. People know that. And so I have to make sure that I have no new lesions on my brain. It's an important thing I have to do. I could not get in touch with a real person for a week. We were playing telephone tag. So I finally ended up calling the number and just pressing a bunch of, a bunch of numbers and saying, representative, 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 finally got somebody who was mad that they had to answer the phone to make an appointment for a really important procedure. It's unbelievable. You yeah. know, could I recommend something? What? You get your own MRI. At home. A new, my own MRI machine? Yes. You know that Stony Brook were, was the school that came up with the MRI machine here in New York? Did not know that. Yeah, it's true. It's an affordable school located on the east end of Long Yes. Island. Maybe they have MRI machines. Then maybe now that I've with, given them a shout out. Right. Maybe they'll give you, they'll have an extra. Maybe I'm sorry. I'm using this as sort of a, a complaining right. place. So let's talk about what's happening in New York politics. Yes. Because so oftentimes New York sets the tone for the rest of the country. This is uh, happening again So what happens is when you're the governor in power and you're legislator in power in your state, you try to draw the lines, uh, the gerrymander lines, uh, it's most beneficial for your party. It's always been the case. But if you do it so severely, it comes out unconstitutional. In North Carolina, they got reprimanded. They had to go redo it again. Same thing with Ohio and one other state. But now New York was so insane the way they drew their uh, battle lines that they have to go back to the drawing board. And they got a, they got two weeks to put it all together. It says the deadline is April 30th. A lower level court has ruled that the maps were unconstitutional, given the legislature April 30th to come up with new maps or leave the task to a court appointed expert. And they asked Kathy Hochul yesterday the and governor. she was just like, I have uh, that'll be taken care of. No problem. It'll be OK. Everybody's fine. Yeah, so the Dems were hoping for at least the old lines now. The GOP is hoping for a better divide. We know the we uh, New York law seats because a lot of people left the state. Uh, some candidates don't know if they'll even have a district to run in. That's crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what that's what happens. I mean, that that's what happened to um, um, Kinzinger, Adam Kinzinger, in uh, no, Illinois. They lost so many people that they ba- basically drew out his district. Right. So when he had he had to go run somebody else's district, he knew he wouldn't have won. Uh, the new map may uh, uh, has to be done by May 16th, finalized by the 20th. And with reason why this is a national story, it could decide the balance of power in the House. Of course. Right. So there's only five seats 
And if the Democrats feel as though if they could have some type of good news and redraw these these states in the right did. way. They did. They went and drew the maps. So that means the primaries could be on a different day in a different month. Like August. Yeah. And so if you're running for governor, you got to continue to run for the nomination through the summer. But I mean, in New York, Zeldin's going to get it, right? Well, I I have no knowledge on this, but it do, does seem it does seem that he is probably going to be. He's up by like 20, 30 points. I mean, how much more divided are you going to be? Do you think Rudy Giuliani uh, stumping for Andrew is helping? Uh, well, maybe. I mean, I, that's why I think that I, all of these candidates could should have a, a shot at it. Don't you agree? Yeah, but not a, not a six month shot because no. then when by the Kathy Hochul's got a machine supporting her, mm-hmm. even though she's made a series of bad decisions. Number one, threw out all these obligations to pensions that kept the budget somewhat in order. Number two, I'm all for the Buffalo Bills. But you should have consulted someone Terrible. before you gave them six hundred million dollars yeah. of taxpayer money. Yeah, I, I think people are really mad, and, and it should have been Buffalo. on a ballot. They should have taxpayers yeah. should have had a say in this, and she just went ahead and did it. And it looks like her own family, her own husband, is going to benefit from this. He's like a concession ga- stand guy. I did not know guy. that. He's- yeah, he uh, he works for a concession stand company, which obviously is benefited by these big stadiums. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. But what is happening with Governor Cuomo, who's fancying some type of comeback? He keeps missing deadlines. He's got a ton of money. Is he in any legal trouble still? Well, uh, my friend Daniel Arbini, uh, I've known the Arbini family for almost two years now. They also lost their father uh, to COVID, which he contracted in his New York nursing home, a Brooklyn nursing home. Uh, Daniel has filed a federal civil lawsuit. He did that yesterday uh, and uh, wants to sue not only Cuomo, he wants to sue the state of New York, Melissa DeRosa, who was his top aide, who admitted that they undercounted the numbers, and Howard Zucker, who was the health commissioner, who has since stepped down. So he's, he filed that by by himself uh, and and is going to go forward uh, to try to... I mean, this is a story of David and Goliath. He really is David against the whole machine of Andrew and Cuomo. And people will jump on board if he is... I he, hope so. Yeah, here's, here's, here's what he said yesterday on WGY Radio, Cup 44. Fast forward a couple of months and we hear and learn that our governor is writing a book. The week after his book went out, we hold a mock funeral for his leadership and integrity. People are coming out of the woodwork to tell us what has happened to them. So we're learning things that nobody else knew at the time. But we met a lot of other what we call COVID orphans. We met Janice Dean at at that event and got close to her after what her in-laws went through. Our dear friend from that we grew up with around the corner lost both his parents to COVID in the nursing home. His mother got it in the nursing home. The father was visiting the mother. He got it. They both died in a week. So that's why he's taking on, and there's no apology, there's no acknowledgement. Nothing. What other states did the same thing? Well, New Michigan? Jersey. New Jersey. And by the way, New Jersey paid 30, $53 million over COVID deaths at a veteran's home. They did that. They settled that just a few months ago. Uh, so New Jersey, that would be Murphy. They did exactly the same thing. They put COVID positive patients into nursing homes by the thousands. Michigan, Whitmer, Governor Whitmer did the same thing. And we found out she was covering up the numbers as well. That has been proven uh, by an audit. And then we also have Pennsylvania. Governor Wolf did the same thing, putting COVID positive patients into nursing homes. Uh, and there are several other states. Wow. And so- we need so we need to start start with New York and then from there if there's a precedent set then we go we, then we need to do the same thing in every other state that put covid positive patients into nursing homes and by the way uh, the UK high court across the pond ruled that this type of action was illegal they did exactly the same thing in the UK of putting covid patients into nursing homes was there a financial reason why this could have happened is, is it pay more to send people back yeah it's 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 a big hospital lobby thing the hospitals from what i gather wanted paying customers to come into their their hospitals and got rid of the seniors which they decided to put back into the nursing homes uh even though they were supposed to protect the vulnerable this is what i don't understand they had all of us quarantined so that we couldn't go out but yet they put 
COVID into the most vulnerable places where our seniors lived and did it without us knowing. Wow. Between the crime, between uh, the budget, which see Kathy Hochul looks way over her head, a ridiculous naming of a lieutenant governor who's under indictment, right. who, who ran on to fund the police. Yeah. So between all this, do you think that there's a sense that a Republican has a shot? Because I saw one Lee Zeldin poll. He was up a point against Hochul. I think if, if there's ever a time for a different party in New York State, it's now. So do, we'll some, one more thing for Arbini. Do you remember Trump and Cuomo were just fighting nonstop and then they'd get along, then they wouldn't? Mm-hmm. So what do you need? Because I need ventilators and yeah. I need to play. I need to make my makeshift hospitals. They ignored Good Samaritan's purse that opened up in Central Park. Yep. And then they converted the Javits Center to a yes. big hospital. Spent, uh, I mean, millions of dollars doing that. And here's what Arbini said, cut 45. Governor Cuomo had at his disposal, thanks to President Trump, 2,000 beds besides Samaritan's purse, 135 beds extra in New York City to be used by anybody and everybody. Did you know that our dear governor, in quotes, decided to make the Javits Center and the USS Comfort almost impossible for people to get into. That's true. He increased the health requirements such that nobody could use it. So you had he to purposely sh- kept people out of the USS Comfort and the Javits Center. And he made the only, the only option was to go into a nursing home where two weeks before this, he said it was like fire through dry grass because we learned from yep. Washington State what happened. And that's why we need an independent bipartisan investigation to mm-hmm. find out the why. I mean, there were nursing homes that actually asked that they could they bring the patients to the USS Comfort and they were denied. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.